Up until now, we've been working with linear regression, and there are actually many different types of regression. Um, there's gamma distribution regression, there's uh, Poisson regression, there's uh, many types, but the two most widely used are linear regression and the topic of this lecture, which is logistic regression. So logistic regression is the type of regression that you will typically use when you have a binary target. And what is a binary target? A binary target is when you have two possible outcomes, yes, no, up, down, true, false, or in the data science world, it's typically represented as a zero or a one. And when you see a zero and a one and you have a lot of other data, there might be a temptation to use linear regression. And that's certainly possible to use, but it's certainly not desirable. And the reason why is that linear regression, if you try to use linear regression, when you have a zero or a one as a target, you may run into some difficulties. Uh, the first difficulty is, if you recall from the previous lectures, the um, one of the assumptions of linear regression is that your errors should be randomly distributed, no pattern detected. That was homoscedastic as opposed to heteroscedastic errors. Um, and if you also recall from the previous lecture, that's not necessarily the end of the world, but it's certainly not desirable to have a pattern in your errors. But a more important problem with linear regression is that the probability values, and remember, if you're doing probability, you would have a value between 0 and 1, or 0% and 100%. You don't want anything outside of that range. If you use linear regression, you can theoretically get answers that are beyond 100% or less than 0%. For example, you might get a prediction that something is 142% likely to occur, and that's obviously impossible. Or you might get another answer like something is minus 37% likely to occur. Again, that's impossible. So this is not a desirable thing to use. Um, you can, in theory, truncate those answers. So you could do something like if you ever get an answer like 142%, maybe you truncate it down to 99% or anything less than zero, you truncate it to 1%. You can do that, but that's not necessarily a desirable thing to do. Now, in the opinion of your instructor, and actually widely used in the um, field of data science, a lot of people use linear regression anyway. Even though you really shouldn't, a lot of people do, and they will just truncate um, up to like one, 0 0.001 or 0 0.999 and it gives actually adequate results it's it's linear regression is pretty robust but again um logistic regression which is what the topic of this lecture is is so widely used and so well understood virtually every software in the world that you know of any repute will include logistic regression. You know, SAS will use it, R, Python, all sorts of different statistical programming languages will have access to logistic regression. But if you don't have access to logistic regression, you can probably get by with linear regression. But again, logistic regression is, is desirable. And also in some industries, they will be heavily regulated and you will be required to use logistic regression. So it's good to know about it. Um, so what is logistic regression? It's basically will solve, it first of all will solve the regression using a maximum likelihood uh, algorithm. In short, it's gonna use a trial and error approach. And when it is done, it's not going to predict the zero or the one. Instead, it's going to predict the logarithm of the odds, also called logit. So if you ever see logit, it means the log odds. This is why it's called logistic regression. Once you get log odds or logit, you have to convert that into probability. 
Not hard to do, but you need to know how to do it. So we're not going to go into the mathematics behind logistic regression because it's beyond the scope of this course, but I will show you how to convert logit into um, probability. So um, anyways, the uh, logistic regression, there are actually uh, several types of regression that will handle a zero or a one but logistic regression is the most common. It's easy to um, write scoring code for this. It's easy to interpret the results. And again, as I mentioned, it is widely accepted by industry and government. So if you have to do something that's heavily regulated like insurance or, or possibly um, credit scoring or maybe something in the medical fields, a government inspector is going to be surprised if you're using anything other than logistic regression for a binary target. So let's talk about how do you convert logit to probability. Okay, let's assume that you used a logistic regression, let's say from the R programming language, and you ended up with this mathematical formula. Let's say you have two inputs, x1 and x2, and you end up with this mathematical formula. Okay, this looks like linear regression, but it, it certainly looks like this. But when you get an answer, it's going to have to be converted into a probability. So we're going to assume that the inputs into this are going to be 5 and 1.5. And we're going to put those guys into here and here, and we're going to come up with an answer, but we're going to convert that into a probability score. So let's get started. So again, here is our formula right here. And we are going to put 5 in for this guy and 1.5 in for this guy. So let's do that. So once we do that, we're going to solve this equation and we're going to get this answer here. And that's going to be the logit, logistic. That's the log odds. So let's solve that. And we get an answer of negative 0.8296. So what do we do with that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put that guy into this formula right here. So this guy gets dumped into this formula, and we're going to take the exponent of it. So he's the log of the odds, so we got to convert him back to odds. Now, the exponent of this is when you take something to the e power. Now, pi is a, is a mathematical constant, 3.14159. Well, there are other constants in mathematics, and one of the famous ones is e. And it's an, it's an irrational number. It goes on forever. It's non-repeating. Non, it never ends. And the first, I don't know, bunch of digits are 2.1828, And we're going to take this number to the negative 0.82 power. So let's do that. And when we do that, we end up with a number 0.4376. Now we're going to take that guy and dump him into this formula to convert odds. See, this is the odds now. So the odds of, of something occurring are 0.4376 to 1. Well, that's hard for humans to interpret odds, so we're going to convert that into a probability. So to convert something into probability, we just say the odds divided by 1 plus the odds. So let's do that. So now if we do this, we put this guy in here, and we put this guy in here. So we're going to say 0.4376 divided by 1 plus this. And when we do that, we end up with 0.304. And what does that mean? It means that the probability, given this mathematical formula and these inputs, the probability that something is going to occur will be 30.4%. So this is logistic regression. It converts the log odds and that gets converted into probability. And the good thing about this is that the data will be constrained between 100% and 0%. And this is a type of, uh, of regression that is designed for a binary target. And we're going to have some examples on how to use this in R in the next lecture.